Hello, I'm Dr. Paul Riley. I would like to spend a few minutes with you to share the series of talks that I've prepared with the Cruise Lecturers Association. But first, a little about myself. After spending six years at Manchester University studying chemistry, I moved to Sussex University to take up the post of research fellow there. Two years later, I moved into industry and began my career with Unilever. Some of you may know Unilever as Levers or Lever Brothers. This gave me the opportunity to be involved with many of their products that impact on our daily lives. It also gave me the opportunity to travel extensively around the world, particularly in the Far East. My first talk charts the origins and history of Unilever and the products they manufactured. It is titled William Hesketh Lever and Unilever, How a Multinational Impacts on Our Daily Lives. The company was founded in 1885 by William Hesketh Lever, a grocer from Bolton. He became so successful that, to produce his products, he built his famous factory at Port Sunlight, close to Liverpool and Chester. Here, Lever also built a village of individually starred houses for his workers, Port Sunlight Village, and also a wonderful art gallery where he displayed many of his paintings and artefacts that he collected. So what products did he make? There is a clue in the name above. Perhaps the most famous product was Sunlight Soap, Others were Lifebuoy Soap, Vim, Pear Soap, and the detergents Rinso and Lux. Later, frozen foods were produced. The famous Bird's Eye brand, originally developed by Clarence Bird's Eye, who was taught by the Inuits how to freeze fish. I will take you through the history of these brands using some of their early advertising. My second talk is titled A Tour Around the Human Body, Fun and Facts. This is a light-hearted tour highlighting some of the more unusual and perhaps some of the not so well-known facts. I will begin by looking at our skin, the largest organ of our body, how it grows and what it does. Then there are the dust mites. We lose between four and nine pounds of dead skin cells every year, which is the food for the mites. Then we will look at hair, its functions, how it grows and how it changes as we age. Then, as they say, horses sweat, men perspire, and women merely glow. Do you know why we sweat? Are deodorants the same as antiperspirants? Well, in this talk, you will find the answer. Did you know that deodorants are tested by trained armpit sniffers, who are usually women, and body odour only really begins at puberty? Do you remember the mum deodorant? It took its name from the saying, mum's the word, or in other words, let's keep quiet about B.O. My third talk is titled Smelling Nice and Looking Good, The History of Cosmetics and Personal Hygiene. Here I will take you through some of the history of some of the early cosmetics and fragrances. I will also discuss some of the more important innovations that improved our health and hygiene. I will cover a little more about the history of soap, perhaps the greatest innovation in personal care. Mum deodorant was the world's first mass market deodorant for women introduced in 1885. Men had to wait much longer for their deodorant. For its early marketing campaigns in the 1900s, Listerine mouthwash capitalised on people's fear of bad breath, more correctly called halitosis. Their adverts proposed that it turned people off marrying their boyfriends or their girlfriends. Staying with marriage, the story goes that the bride's bouquet was really there to disguise body odour. And returning to personal hygiene, did Thomas Crapper really invent the flushing loo? Also, for keeping our clothes clean, Lifebuoy soap was first introduced as the laundry soap. But even before this, the Romans used urine to bleach their clothes. My fourth talk is Open Wide, a short history of dentistry. In this talk, I will look at the early history of dentistry and oral care products. Did you know that the first recorded dentist practiced in Egypt some 2,000 years ago and that the early theory of tooth decay was that the pain was caused by a worm eating away the inside of the tooth? A famous French dentist, Pierre Fouchard, regarded as the father of modern dentistry, recommended rinsing each morning with one's own urine as a mouthwash. Then there's Saint Apollonia. According to legend, after refusing to renounce the faith, she was tortured, which included having all of her teeth violently pulled out or shattered. For this reason, she's popularly regarded as the patroness of dentistry and those suffering from toothache and other dental problems. Moving closer to today, 
Early toothpaste and powders were packed in ceramic pots, often prepared by local dentists. David and William Gibbs, now Unilever, was one of the first companies in the UK to mass produce toothpaste in the early 1900s. And for those of you who like quizzing, Gibbs SR toothpaste was the first commercial television advert to be broadcast, and Single was the first toothpaste in the world with a stripe. My fifth talk is Gemstones and Precious Metals, Their Origins and Use in Jewellery. In this talk I will define what constitutes a gemstone or a precious metal. We will take a look at how gems and precious metals are formed within the earth and what gives them their superb colours and optical properties. Amongst others we will look at diamonds, emeralds, garnets and some of the more unusual gemstones such as morganite. I will then discuss how they are crafted into jewellery and conclude with some facts about the more famous gems. My final talk is an introduction to astronomy. Astronomy is a new adventure for me. We will look at the origins of the universe. Was there really a Big Bang? I will describe the energy source that drives our sun, including Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared, and then look at the birth and death of stars. It's the violent death of stars that produce all the elements that make up the Milky Way, the planets, the world around us, and indeed ourselves. The gold in your wedding ring was originally produced in a supernova explosion. We are literally made of stardust. Thank you, and I look forward to meeting you all.